We're in Washington, so of course on June 29th, almost summertime, it is unbelievably foggy. I can barely even see anything. Right now, we're gonna go on a little mission. A mission to find something that isn't, a mission to find something that isn't in stock readily. And I think I found some at a particular store. So we're gonna go check them out, make sure they're there, and see if we can't grab one. There's a spider. And we're off. Now, this thing that I'm looking for, some of you guys know that I do a fair amount of work on my tablet, where I'm actually doing one of the major steps in the editing process I do on the tablet because it is much, much faster than on the computer. My iPad is several years old, and there's certain things it just can't do well. Something came out recently that is an upgrade to what I have. Like I said, I believe I have found some in stock. Surprise, surprise, where do you think I'm going to pick this guy up? Hello, you guys, I think, have a... feeding these little birds. Oh. <laughs> Got it. Oh, I feel so much better right now. For the last couple weeks, I've been wearing my glasses because I ran out of contacts and I couldn't get a new prescription until I got a new eye exam and I couldn't get a new eye exam for like three weeks or four weeks or something like that from when I called. Kind of crazy. I'm sure I could just go to a different location other than the one that I go to normally. I was able to get a trial pack of the ones that I use. Now I don't have to wear my glasses right now and hopefully these will make it until my eye exam in like three weeks. guessed it, it's the brand new Apple iPad Pro 10.5 inch. I'm pretty excited about it. And instead of going for a third party keyboard like I've always done in the past, I just bit the bullet and got the actual Apple one. I feel like every time I've ever bought a third party keyboard, there's just always something. There's one thing that I wish was better, or oh, I don't like that it does that, or man, if only it was like this. <laughs> I think Apple kind of nails it in that kind of stuff. Like here's my old one right here. Uh, this is an iPad Air 2, um, and I purchased this keyboard, which is actually for the Air 1. That's why it doesn't line up perfectly, but I got it really cheap. Uh, but this is a really high-end case too from Zag. Uh, it's a case keyboard. I think these things were like 120 bucks or something like that when they came out. But the one thing that drives me nuts about this one, when you open it up, it's all fine and dandy, works great as a keyboard, but it's a hard case. It doesn't bend all the way around, like that's the maximum. If you want to hold your iPad like this and use it like this, you can't because you have the keyboard here. You have to take the iPad out of the case to use it in portrait orientation. That would just drive me crazy. It basically limited my iPad to not being able to be handheld. You had to have that keyboard out. And then just taking it out of the keyboard every time was, you know, a big nuisance. So I'm super excited to have the Apple keyboard, the one that you can just, you know, flip it around and hold it portrait or even just take it off. Super simple because it's just a magnet. Let's see here. Let's clear all this stuff out of the way. Open this bad boy up. Never try to open electronics without a trusty old Swiss Army knife. One 
one thing I need to do is change out the sim. And they're still using these big bricks, huh? Would have thought they went to something smaller by now. That's the tool I was looking for right there. I'm glad they include it. So simple when you have the tool designed for it. And first you had to pop the big one out of here and that comes out. And then this guy is inside that and you gotta pop that guy out. And now I even have to pop out a even smaller one. Boom, it's amazing. Fire her up if there's power. Hold on. <laughs> Let me swipe away. Press home. <laughs> That's what it was the whole time. Don't look. All right, now that we got in there and logged into our Apple account, we can find the backups, set it up from. Look at how meticulous Apple is. Even the USB cable, it's like perfectly wrapped with these little tabs to make it look perfect while it's sitting in the box. App always amazes. All right, we are back up. It looks pretty amazing. It's like you're just holding a screen. I'm looking forward to the keyboard because hopefully it's amazing for the cost of it. Pretty nice Apple design, as always. It's supposed to just snap in, I think. Maybe it's on the other side. Boom. Click. I can definitely tell that this keyboard will take a little bit to getting used to. The keys, they don't click down very far. So there's not that much room from where you hit it to how far it goes down. But I'm sure that's just something you'll get used to. Trusting. Testing the new keyboard. I hope I will be able to get used to it faster than not. <laughs> when it's closed up, nice and thin. I'm super pumped about this. Being able to use my iPad a little bit more than I used to be able to. Like before I couldn't do that with my old iPad. I mean, it was just the case or the keyboard I had with it. I could have changed it or whatever, but I had bought it for that one and I just wanted to keep on using it. But I'm super excited to have the new iPad. This thing is getting killer reviews. I think I keep on seeing things that say it's pricey, which it is, but they say it's pricey, but perfect. I'll take that. One minor thing I'm noticing just right away is how when you, when you click it down into the keyboard here and it magnetizes, you can see the keyboard's actually lifting up. And I'm wondering if that has to do with the stiffness of this guy right here. Cause when it's like this, the keyboard's flat, but if you're pushing down, which is what happens when the iPad's on it, it makes the keyboard go up. And I'm wondering if that'll loosen up. This, this guy right here will loosen up over time. Yeah, either way, as you're, as you have your fingers on it, you're pushing the keyboard down. So 
It'll either be something you get used to or over time it'll work itself to be laying a little bit more flat. Okay, we'll call it there for now. Give me a couple more days of actually using this bad boy so I can have some things to say about it um, and my experiences with it. But for now, super excited. I'm super bright. Man, this camera. The Sony RX100 Mark V has <laughs> quite trouble when it's backlit. All this light right here, even though I'm here and it's like face detecting me. I can see the little box around my face. It's still exposing for this huge light. And if I cover some of it, I get brighter. But the second I come over here, wah, wah, now I'm all dark. You would think, Sony, that if you're doing face tracking, like I can see the box around my face, you would put priority on that part for the metering to actually put priority on the face. Because you already know you're tracking the face because you're tracking it for autofocus purposes. But why don't you track it for metering purposes? Oh, hi, I look properly exposed. Oh, there's a huge window behind me. Sony, firmware update, maybe?